So at the top of the show and right behind me, you see six. I'm gonna be talking to five. I never won the bet. I tried to guess who was not gonna be here and I didn't make it. <laughs> but we're so proud of them because they're Jamaicans who've taken the steps to join the U.S. Army and pursue their dreams of becoming aviators. So I have Warrant Officers Cipron Francis, Orville Nelson, Ashari Uta, Carl Williams, and Leighton Wallace. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Thank you. Good morning, Smile Jamaica. We're happy to be here. What fascinates me most uh, is that you're all from different parts of Jamaica. Um, and would have all traveled different journeys to be where you are. So I'm going to start with you, Warrant Officer Nelson. William Nib High School grew up in Montego Bay. What were your early dreams of, of being in aviation? Honestly, as long as I could remember myself, I always wanted to become a pilot. Yeah. And I never knew at all if that would be possible. And um, even joining the military, mm -hmm. even moving to the States, joining the military, I never thought it would be possible. I started off as a helicopter mechanic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one day one of the senior pilots came to me. He's like, you know, you're always asking a whole bunch of questions about <laughs> this here. How about people fly them? You know, and that just sparked it into me to, you know, pursue that. And from that point to it, now, I'm yeah. pursuing them. What was it like the first time you worked on an Apache? It was, it was very exhilarating. Um, yeah. Um, it was, you know, I, I thought to myself, like a lot of people where I grew up from, where I grew up, they don't get to do stuff like this. Mm -hmm. and it was just uh, representing them in that sense that, you know, I get to do something that, you know, not everybody gets a chance to do. And I'm grateful. I yeah. thank God for that. Yeah. Warren Officer Francis from Port Antonio. Yes. Now, Teach me. Antonio. Titchfield High School, I just saw all of them go, yay, he's from Titchfield. Yes, Titchfield is the greatest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, all, you also started out working as a helicopter repairer. Yes, I did. I actually, I um, absolutely did. Uh, my journey is much similar to uh, Martin Officer Nelson's. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we both met in AIT, and our um, path has been the same. Moved to the same duty station, started working on the Apache, um, did deployments, and... Um, did deployments and rotations together and the same pilots who encouraged him actually encouraged me and they were like hey Francis you guys work so hard and you ask so many questions and are so intrigued about this helicopter because you know back home we only saw helicopters when we were kids and it was flying over our house and the whole yard or neighborhood would shout helicopter <laughs> right until we couldn't see it or hear it no more so it was very exciting and like good news to our families that we were actually touching this aircraft and get to see it go fly. And now we're actually at the um, controls and yeah. flying. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, and you're training on the Black Hawk? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how difficult is that? It is very time consuming. Yeah. It's a hard training. It is something that makes you think. Sometimes I question myself, oh man, what did I, what did I do, <laughs> you know, but it, with, with the background that I'm coming from, you know, having strong roots, mm -hmm. I, I, I often remember, and I have a song, you know, I'm not a church goer every Sunday, but I have a song that I sing most times, I just can't give up now whenever it gets hard for me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that keeps me going. Yeah. Warren, Warren Officer Williams from St. Elizabeth, um, yeah. and, and I, Monroe. You guys are, what is it? I can't say it. It's, it's gibberish to me, but I know it makes a lot of sense to the Monroe, the Monroe old boys. Um, yeah, City yeah. on the hill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, also worked as a mechanic uh, on the Black Hawk and then crew chief. Um, yes, ma'am. So, so, so maybe not so far away the journey as uh, my other two warrant officers. Did you, yeah. did you, though, initially have visions of being a pilot? I did growing up. Um, I can remember vividly one one field trip I had as a like six year old. Mm -hmm. They took us to the airport, gave us like a, a tour of the back then Air Jamaica. Yeah, um, giving my age, but yeah, <laughs> and they let me sit in the seat, and I didn't want to leave the airplane. Yeah. So you know, it kind of led from there, uh, sparked the interest, and then I came here. Uh, had a family 
and I was the army was intriguing to me. I joined the military as a repairer, mm -hmm. and my recruiter actually asked me, "Do you want to go warrant?" And I was like, "Not yet. I want to learn my craft first, mm -hmm. and then progress into that job." Mm -hmm. um, I've had amazing experiences traveling, working on that aircraft, making it do the things it do, and then like. To be at the controls, that is, I have the best seat. Any <laughs> outfit, I have the best in the world. You know? Yeah, I yeah. More. Yeah, and everyone says, yes, we do. One Officer Wallace from Allison District in Manchester. Wow. But joining the Army pretty young, 18? 18 years old, you know? Yeah. 18. Yeah. It started, you know, like, um, I left Jamaica like 15, 16, and moved to West Palm Beach, Florida. And then at 18, you know, I, I still wasn't so sure about what path, you know, I was gonna take. And so I planned to just use the army as like a stepping stone and eight years later, I'm still stepping, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. yeah it is in the background, you know, I came in as a 91 Bravo, so I'm a little bit mechanic. And um, for a long time, you know, like, they always say, you know, success is on the other side of fear. Mm -hmm. So for you know, like for a long time, I was also like fearful of heights. And then one day, you know, I went to work and it, it just was like one of those exhausting days. And I told myself, you know what, I got to be bold, you know, I got to take a chance and I got to give it everything that I can give it, you know. And ever since that day, you know, in Germany, I've just been pressing. So it's, it's been like a miracle, you know, mm -hmm. and blessed and honored to be here, honestly, because it's one of the best things that I feel like I've done with my life so, so far because wow. it's just war. Wow, excellent. And right now, Warrant Officer Utah is saying, oh my gosh, it's me last. What may I got said now? <laughs> <laughs> Out of Manchester as well. Always wanted to be a pilot, I'm told. Migrated at about 16 years ago. Um, but you joined the Army with the intention of being a pilot, but you did infantry, you did IT. Talk to me about that kind of journey to where you are. So um, growing up, we all had uh, career days at primary school in Jamaica. Yeah. And ever since first grade, I've always wanted to be a pilot. And then everybody would say, what's your backup plan? Because everybody wants to know your backup plan. And um, I never had one. It's just, I'm going to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I went to college and I sat down and I'm scheduling my flight school, my flight lessons. And the guy said to me, you know, this is going to be an extra $50,000. And I said, uh, I'm going to change my major and come back to this. <laughs> so, yeah. um, then I joined the Army, um, started out in the infantry world. If you're going to join the Army, why not go all the way? Yeah. Um, so, the infantry and once that contract was up uh they said hey we want you to stay in and i said you know i want a a, a very nice office i don't want to be in the field anymore <laughs> and they said i'll put you in it so i did it for a couple years as well yeah and then i only said you know what i want to go back to being a pilot because that's all I, what i always wanted to do mm -hmm. and so i took the test my i don't know what everybody's journey was like but mine was a little different i went and did everything, all the qualifications, and just put it together and gave it to the recruiter and said, hey, here I am. And they said, okay, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Warren Officer Williams, what I'm hearing is that uh, there, there are great opportunities in the Army. I'm not hearing one of you say, oh boy, I, I've been in it and I was, I'm not so sure I did the right thing. You all sound as if you're very happy that you, you've been in the Army and the opportunities that it's afforded you. Absolutely, ma'am. I, I, I'm a late joiner. I joined the military at 30 years, and, and it has been the best decision that I made. Yeah. At that time, and thinking back, uh, I could have done other stuff, mm -hmm. but what I have experienced and what I have gained through joining the military, I would encourage anybody to do that. Yeah. Um, I have one of the, the, most, the experience that stands out to me is I have a top two actually, but the, the one that stands out to me was in Hawaii when there was that volcano, I was on the humanitarian um, mission providing aid for the people of the Big Island. Mm -hmm. And the sights of seeing a volcano erupting, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't say anything other than it's amazing. I will it's take your word for it. I don't want mm -hmm. to see the sight of a volcano erupting personally. But gentlemen, thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. Um, such great I mean, examples of, of what Jamaican men can
can achieve when they focus and when they're determined. And I hope there are a lot of young men watching this morning and just seeing where you are in your journey and knowing that it's possible for them. Have a great day, gentlemen, and see you in the skies from down here. Like I was seeing yeah, that. <laughs> All right, take care. Jamaican U.S. Army Warrant Officers, Cipran Francis, Orville Nelson, Ashari Utah, Carl Williams, and Leighton Wallace. On the other side of the break, we experience classical music in a new way. So go.